Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now Cyberpunk patch 1.5 is finally here and it brings with it a whole host of changes including the very welcome addition of AMD FSR as well as a built-in benchmark mode. CD Projekt Red have even altered the game's minimum system requirements which now include a GTX 970 as the lowest suggested graphics card instead of the 780. This is in response to the end of driver support for most 700 series GPUs. I'll have an updated minimum spec video out soon but in the meantime I want to see if and how the game's performance has changed since version 1.31 with the hardware I have at hand. I'll be seeing how my current setup handles the latest 1.5 version of the game and comparing the results to the previous 1.31 release. We'll then be revisiting the Athlon 3000G and putting the Intel UHD 730 graphics to the test. Nothing too in depth today, so let's start off with the Core i3 and RTX 3050 combo. This is a very nice combination for respectable 1080p gaming and beyond, and Cyberpunk runs, or ran with 76 FPS on average, with version 1.31. These figures were taken from a custom benchmark run which consisted of driving from one specific point to another. Because there is no benchmark tool in this version, I will be testing the game the same way as we move on to the 1.5 footage for the sake of fairness, but any future videos that feature this game will include figures taken from the new benchmarking mode. As you can see, this setup also produced good percentile figures, with the game staying at above 60 FPS the majority of the time. With patch 1.5 at the same preset, I'm happy to report that the average was, well, 1 FPS better, but it's the percentile figures that were most improved. These changes aren't necessarily ones you can actually feel when playing the game, but they are welcome nonetheless, especially the 0.1% increase. I've seen a few other videos comparing the performance of these versions with various hardware, and the differences I've seen have varied from no difference to a tiny bit of difference, to the latest patch running a little bit worse. That's worth bearing in mind, but all I can do is report my personal findings with the hardware I'm using. As you know, I'm also a big fan of pushing integrated graphics to their limits. The static resolution scaling option seems to have gone in patch 1.5 in favor of the aforementioned FSR. I didn't realize this would be the case before updating, so I have no data to compare the following results to, as I always tested low-end hardware with a static res reduction. It's safe to assume, however, that there probably wouldn't have been too much of a difference with most integrated solutions. That said, I do want to show you how both the UHD 730 and Vega 3 graphics handle this game with the newly added Fidelity FX Super Resolution option enabled. The i3-12300 with its UHD 730 graphics can push 30 FPS at 720p with FSR set to balanced. This frame rate can go higher with performance or ultra performance modes, but the game will look a lot worse for it. Now don't get me wrong, this isn't exactly pleasant on the eye, but it's quite impressive considering that this is still cyberpunk, and it's nice to see how far Intel integrated graphics have come. If you're desperate, or you're waiting for that shiny new GPU to arrive, you could certainly play Cyberpunk like this in the meantime. Now it's the turn of the dual-core Athlon 3000G. If this thing could talk, it would probably wish for a new owner. It often produces surprising results in pairing with the built-in Vega 3i GPU, even if those results aren't always playable. I've gone with the low settings again at 1280 by 720 but this time I've had to use the performance FSR mode in order to hit 30 FPS. The ultra performance mode will again make things even smoother but it just makes things even more harsh to look at in my opinion. I would still say that this is quite impressive given the hardware in use, two cores and integrated graphics up against one of the most demanding AAA titles currently available. Both the i3 and Athlon do a surprising job, even if the frame rate isn't always consistent. Overall, I'm looking forward to getting back into Cyberpunk 2077, both on PC and PS5. I'd suggest reading through the patch notes, and if you've got the game installed on PC but haven't touched it in anticipation of this update, well, 
now's the time to give it another go, as the list of changes goes far beyond tweaking performance and adding extra options. I'll certainly be spending the next few weekends back in Night City. Thank you very much for watching then. Let me know how the game and its newest update performs on your hardware in comparison to the older version. If you enjoyed this one, leave a like, leave a dislike if you didn't. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and hopefully I'll see you all in the next one.